An important development this morning in the Craigslist killer case. Our CBS station in Boston, WBZ, has learned that a handgun police found in Philip Markoff's apartment is a preliminary match to the one used in Jalissa Brisman's murder. This, as the family of his fiance speaks out on his behalf. CBS News correspondent Bianca Solizano has more. Since the arrest of accused Craigslist killer Philip Markoff, his fiance Megan McAllister has not spoken publicly. Yesterday, her father spoke for her. She's got a lot of friends, a lot of family, friends, and uh, it's been a big help to us. 25-year-old McAllister, who still plans to marry Markoff this summer, has been holed up at her family's New Jersey home since his arrest. According to her father, Megan believes police have the wrong man. She's still confident in Phil. And she's not the only one. Markoff supporters started this Facebook site called Phil Markoff is innocent until proven guilty. Markoff being held in a Suffolk County jail is now on suicide watch after marks resembling shoelaces were found on his neck. The Boston University medical student is accused of stalking two women who advertised erotic acts through Craigslist, robbing one and killing another, Jalissa Brisman. Police there are continuing to investigate. They have now placed this posting in the erotic services section of Craigslist to try to find any other women who Markov may have also victimized. Bianca Solorzano, CBS News. New York. Philip Markoff was once a student at the State University of New York in Albany. One of his friends and classmates was Morgan Houston, who knows all too well about Markoff. She joins us along with Daily News staff writer Erica Pearson. Good morning to you both. Good morning. So you guys were pals. You were in the same sort of study group and same mm -hmm. social group. Once upon a time, he asked you to go on a date? No, it wasn't. It wasn't a, even a date. It wasn't even a date. It was a bunch of us friends all going to hang out. There was mm -hmm. a group of us, and it ended up at the end of the night, him and I got separated once we got back to mm -hmm. the dorms. And what happened? Um, getting back, entering the dorms, he tried to, he pushed me up against the wall in the entranceway and right. tried, he was trying to kiss me and right. I just was turning my head and I, you know, right. normally that would be fine, no, I'm not interested, mm -hmm. but it was, I had to try and really just push him off me and right. he was overpowering me and I couldn't. Mm pull him off of me, yeah. but thankfully, shortly after, one of my very close friends came up and was able to pull him off me, and right. I escaped upstairs, but... Something like this happens, the day after, the day after, the day after, did you think to yourself, is, what's this guy's deal? I mean, I would think that, but I just kind of chalked it all up to the alcohol, and I'd never seen him do anything like this before, and mm -hmm. I just kind of, I tried to put it out of my head, I didn't tell, people, I mean, mm. there's several people that knew then, but I just, right. I want to forget about it because I had such an impression of him being a right. nice guy. Mm. That was your general impression. Mm -hmm. The other part of this is you did some studying with him. He was quite brilliant, right? He was extremely brilliant. We would, uh, our junior year in college before organic chemistry exams, we would study together and uh, I had been studying all week and he would come in in the morning, nine o'clock in the library sit down next to me saying, I haven't opened a book, I don't know anything, teach me something. And wow. These other pictures that we're seeing off these, some of these websites, he, he was like a serious party guy, apparently. He would party, I mean, everyone okay. partied, but uh, when he partied, he mm -hmm. partied, but he would also stay in yeah. a lot. He'd I have another question for you in a second. What do you think it is about this that we're also intrigued by? I think this is a young man studying to be a doctor, who would take care of us. Healing um, profession, yes, right. Yes, and uh, just such a shock that someone like that would commit these sort of crimes. Yeah. As you've been doing your investigations, what are the things that surprised you most? I think his arrest um, and the things they found in his apartment. Uh, the evidence of yes, him trying yes. to keep also, it. Also like, digital, digital yeah. clues yeah. Have, been, have been really interesting. When you heard about this mm -hmm. going on and his arrest, what went through your mind? I started shaking. I thought it was a joke. I was in complete shock. I woke up the next morning thinking, did I dream this all? And I instantly went online and checked again. And mm -hmm. it wasn't true. And it was just shock. And memories were starting to come back at this point. And it was just utter disbelief. I never expected this to be someone I knew, mm -hmm. let alone a fellow medical student. Mm -hmm. what so, a story. Motto is do no harm. And <laughs> yeah, you got that right. Thank you so much for coming in and telling your story. Thank Good you luck too. as you continue your investigation. Morgan Houston and Erica Pearson.